Hello everyone, it's John, or you know me better as Lynch Pass, and what I want to go over today is this really quickly how to use the Arc Server Manager or ASA Manager Server Tool for managing your Arc servers. It's um, <laughs> a very simple tool. I have the GitHub project out there. Everything is available now, so the app is available, source code is available, so anyone who wants to take a uh, you know, a shot at making it better, feel free. We'll, uh, and, you know, I'll look at your forks and if it's um, in line with the project, we can go ahead and get that out into the main build. So with that being said, let's take a look at the ASA manager server tool. This is what you're going to see when you first open it up. This field here is the server path and this is kind of like your, your brains, if you will. So <laughs> the cool thing about the app is it will actually store that. Uh, so if I close it, reopen it, it doesn't have anything there. So if I go ahead and put in a path like specific servers, which is where all my stuff is, close it, reopen it, it will go ahead and sort that path. So that's great. So now what we're going to do is uh, we have a server selection button here to select the different servers in that root path. We're going to hit update server list and then you'll see the three different servers there. So scorts, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on that. Save settings. So now if I had anything here, it would have saved those settings and I could load those settings. But of course, I don't have any settings saved because I just saved with blank settings. So we're going to go ahead and type in test and let's move that across all the different text boxes here. Including like BattleI and Archon. And we're going to enable schedule backup. So you see the backup timer has started. Quick note on the backup stuff. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to get that to work globally. So <laughs> if anyone has an idea of how to get that to work, that'd be awesome. You can uh, implement it in the source code or get with me in my Discord, and uh, we'll get that figured out for uh, it to be globally. So as of right now, that right there enabled backup for this server selection. So only Scorch is going to get backed up. That's not ideal. I know, uh, but like I said, if anyone has a way of fixing that or, you know, look at source code and see where I might be messing up, more than happy to accept my faults and work on it to get it fixed. So now that we have all that in, uh, this, oh, mind you, when you select a server, the install server is disabled. That way you can't accidentally, like, mess up your, your server path. But if this was, uh, if you clear this, oh, well, let's save settings first. If you clear this, it does then unlock that. So then you can put in your, you know, whatever you want, your path to install. So, well, in this case, it's going to pull this parent path here. So you just call this out of the center and then pull in that map to center and then it would install it in that path, which would be awesome. So with that being said, <clears throat> let's go ahead and load back up the scorched settings. And there. So, oh, actually, hold on. Let's uh, load up the uh, island. Settings. So the island settings has that, nothing really major. As you can tell, that got disabled, so now the timer stopped. Um, I need to figure out why it's selling us twice. Uh, that is a, a coding bug. I will get that figured out. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything, though. I've tested this pretty extensively, and, it, and it's definitely taking the backups. So now um, let's go back to Scorch, low settings, and you'll see all of those settings got enabled, so including the backup, Archon, uh, battle eye, everything up enabled, enabled, so that's great. One thing that I haven't touched on yet is the auto restart option. So if you have this program like startup at boot or you know at a startup program, I would like if the system got turned off and turned back on and logged in, I would like to have this program open up and when it opens up, it would start the uh, all the servers. Of course, that needs to be a global setting as well. So whenever this gets figured or the backup settings get figured out, the auto restart option could probably fit into that as well. <laughs> and then uh, we have an, oh, let's explain the other buttons here. So to update the start.bat, so when you put information in, like your server name and all that, uh, I've noticed the password and <laughs> server password, and some of those things do not work, but like your, so I don't actually have them update the start.bat because they break it. So what I do have those, like the server name, um, the mod list and things like that. So that will update in the start.bat. The update game user settings.any, it's a little buggy. I want to mess with it too much right now. I, I'm still working on the logic there and I'll show you why. So let's say we had a game user settings.any, pull that in. So you see how the active mods here and then it's equals in a show map. So let's put in some 
random numbers here, or not numbers, but you know, test, test, test. And then let's update the game user settings. Okay, and then let's load. And as you can tell, it did not do exactly as I wanted it to. I am working on that. Um, it's actually doing a little bit better now. I, I hadn't really tested that since I uh, last worked on it last night. But it does seem like it is actually performing better. So now I could probably get that info to pass through. So that will be fixed in the next patch. I, I, am, I think I know how to fix that now. Now that I'm thinking about it. But as you can tell, it does update the game user settings. Any and all it does is whatever you put in. Of course, we need to make it not make all these duplicates. But whatever you put in, it will create a new line, and then uh, it would put like the test, test, test right here. And this is also editable too, so editable. Uh, you know what I mean. So although this update game user settings. Any is not working just right yet. I I wouldn't worry about it too much because you can actually come in here, edit this right here from the GUI. Like that, hit save file, and then you know we'll swap over to the game. That any go back, and then you see it actually stored that. So you can edit everything here, like Archon password or Archon port, server admin password, everything like that can be edited here. So until this is you know finalized and fixed, you, you totally have that capability. <laughs> so uh, quick things first: install server. You just put in the server name like we were talking about earlier. Install server, and that would install that server and the Pathing like this, so it would actually be like testing service DSA. Uh, of course, you want to leave that as is and then specify that. And then your Steam CMD path that will install Steam CMD if you don't have it. Um, was that's gonna, of course, that's dependent. You need to put the full path for that. So if you did like testing uh, server or uh, test. It would then at the end root if you didn't have a Steam CMD folder, it would create Steam CMD. And then in that folder, you would have steamcmd.exe. So you don't have to do the .exe part. You just have to do this, and it will do the rest from there uh, intelligently. And then, of course, we have <laughs> start server, which is starts the current server you're on. So we'll go ahead and run that and show you it did start it. And then we'll have, uh, you have stop server. So, yeah, if you also swap like to the island and then start server, it also starts the island, as you can tell, island. And this will show you that it does the uh, scorch as well. There you go. So you got your scorch starting. Of course, scorch isn't out yet, I don't think. So I was just using that more as a template on the naming convention. So then on the stop server, you have to have your server fully booted. Just for fair warning, you have to have your server fully booted. You have to have all of this filled out. Because what it's doing is it's sending an Archon command. Oh, yeah, and then you also have to have Archon enabled, and then you have to have the Archon port. Uh, as far as enable Archon and stuff goes, I wouldn't trust that yet either. I need to uh, make that and put the values here. What that would do is once I get this update game user setting working, it will, of course, go in here the way that we need it. But as of right now, you would have to come in here and, and add those manually if you don't already have that set up. So <clears throat> you need to have Archon enabled. You need to have the port set up and all that. You need to have the port on the Windows server set up so that you can go ahead and send Archon commands. Because what, what that's going to do, and the same thing with update server, what that's going to do is it can, it's going to send a do exit command to the server itself. And then after, you know, it, it, that does a world save so that you're, you don't get a corruption or ideally don't get a corruption on the, uh, the arc files. Uh, and then of course the dot back and then what it will do is close the server and it should return a response you know that 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 was done and then whenever you uh, go to update the server it's going to do something similar so if you already have the server running it will send a do exit and close the server update it and then you'll have to of course start because i don't have a, a start uh function in that yet uh, with that being said, if you don't have the server running, it's okay because you can just click the update server button and it will just bypass that check if it's not running. So, uh, it, well, it sends it, but it doesn't do anything. And then it just continues to do the actual update. And that's about it. That's what I have going on here. You have the logging here. So this is pretty, pretty cool. Um, any errors that come up for the most part uh, will pop up here. I use this quite a bit on logging. So when you go to update like the server, uh, what's actually I can show you, we'll go ahead and update, or yeah, uh, that'd be good. So testing tests, 
install server get rid of that um yeah that's that's also bug too so I, I need to fix that uh whenever you go to clear the server selection make sure you then do the install server because if you do like a score that I, I need to make it to where if you select this again it locks it down i will put that logic in eventually it's just uh been, been quite the undertaking I, i've 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 had a lot of fun with it though so with that being said uh now that we have scorched and we want to go ahead and do an update on the server we'll go ahead and start that and as you can tell it's uh was not found it's downloading it was installed and then of course it's trying to run the update command validate quick or validate and then their operable operable program or batch file update complete exit ran code to completion huh. Yeah, that was working prior, and it most likely just needs to be uh, all these settings need to be set for it to actually go through the logic checking. So I won't worry about that too much. The update server should be working. Of course, I will test that more thoroughly, and if I do run into any problems, I will uh, get get that update out to to fix it to to the quickest of my ability. All right, so I went ahead and really quickly found out what the problem was, and it was of course with my uh, async. Uh, task to run the update but we got that fixed so now what we are going to do is just open up the tool one more time and just give you an example of how it will work so we have testing servers in there let's go ahead and load up the scort server so the settings in and then we'll we're going to put this in uh this testing 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 let's make sure i don't hit i have multiple steam cmd pass out there now with all the testing so let's go ahead and hit update server and there we go so as you can tell it looked for it it was not found so it went ahead and started extracting it downloaded and installed it but well, when it downloads and installs all it's doing is unzipping it and putting the .exe there for um, for it to be ran and then there we go so now we're going through our connecting we have our loading the steam api and everything is working as it should be. So this will run through, do the updates uh, that I need for this server. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a global setting for this yet. So you would have to run updates uh, manually for each one. So however many servers you had, you'd have to go in there, click on it, hit the update, go to the next one, update, next one, update. Um, once we get the, once I get the global stuff figured out, I will likely go ahead and just add that in uh, as a you know batch or update all servers if you you know came back from a, a reboot or whatever so yeah there we go it went through and installed extracted the package went ahead and downloaded the updates that i had available and yeah so that's it in a nutshell that's the tool i hope you all enjoyed and you have a wonderful day night wherever you are